<laughs> hi guys welcome back to the channel once again it's your girl Dumevilia. if this is your first time coming across my channel you're welcome i do hope you decide to subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber you guys know that i love you welcome back it's so good to have you here thank you for stopping by once again this video as usual is strictly for educational purposes please do not go searching out anybody that i talk about in this video don't send them any form of hate hate comment threat or violence this channel does not support any of that so today's video is by someone we already know you guys i've made a video about this guy before so i'm just going to go right ahead and play his clip let's be totally honest one of the biggest problems in america right now is black privilege for example last month in georgia a black man shot and killed for elderly white people. The town it happened in hadn't seen a single homicide since 2018. And yet despite all of this, no one really seems to care. The story barely got any national news coverage. But when the races were reversed and a similar incident happened in Florida, there was a national outcry. Or what about when six black men attacked and robbed over 100 Asian women in San Francisco? Can you even imagine what would happen if six white men did that? Now amazingly in San Francisco, 85 percent of the physical assault crimes involve an Asian victim and a black perpetrator. And that's incredible because black people make up less than 6% of the population there. And yet for some reason, you'll never hear a stop Asian hate activist mention that. They'll blame white supremacy instead. There are literally hundreds of stories like this that you never hear about. Take for example, James Lee Ramsey. Last year, he was convicted for assaulting an elderly Asian man. And despite the crime, he served less than a year in jail. So he was released from jail and last month he assaulted another elderly Asian person, this time an 88 year old woman. But it's not just the elderly, an Asian high schooler was recently hospitalized after a black classmate stabbed him for fun. A few weeks ago, six black kids beat up a 15-year-old white kid for his shoes. Bystanders watched and recorded the whole thing. No one stepped in. This is terrible. Innocent people across America are being attacked, robbed, and even killed. And yet no one seems to really care because the people disproportionately causing it all have a certain skin color. And because everyone is afraid of being called racist, these incidents will just keep happening and nothing will change. The only way things will get better is if we start being honest about what's really going on. So you guys remember him, the one that I said is the newscaster or the spokesman of white supremacy. I feel like his TikTok page is basically the TikTok page where a way to the sixth person goes and you know gets charged up. Like when they watch his videos, they're like, no, we can't let this happen. Let's make America great again. Why do people need to stand up for themselves? I feel like those are the kind of emotions those kind of people will get by watching his videos. Because I'm like, bro, what are you saying? He's making up things and twisting things, trying to fit a certain narrative. And it's obvious the group of people he doesn't like from his videos. Yes, I was surprised finding out that there's now a thing called black privilege. And it's been floating around on TikTok. People calling it black privilege. How black people can get away with being raped to the cyst. Calling white people bleach demons and white devils. And how they can basically like say some certain things. But if a white person said it, they're going to be cancelled. How they can do certain things. But if a white person did that, they will not hear the last of it. And I'm like, how privileged are black people really? How like... So he's talking about black privilege and he goes ahead to highlight crimes that were committed by black people and most importantly he tried to talk about black on asian crime i don't know if he's trying to pit black people against asian people i don't know like what was the purpose let me just go right ahead and play people's stitches to his video biggest problems in america right now is black privilege these are facts. All black people know we got black privilege. Well, we got so many privileges. I had to write some down to do this TikTok. Let me see. Oh, uh, we get pulled over by the police, but sometimes we ain't in the mood, so we might argue with them, or we might jump out the car and try to wrestle them to the ground and take their weapon because ain't like they gonna shoot us. And that would be crazy. They might tase us at the most. Let me see. Uh, oh, crimes. You know, we at the most might get probation, but they ain't gonna give us the maximum sentence. That would be unfair to black people because we got the privilege. 
uh, job applications because jobs are equal opportunity for all people. That's why you got to put your race on there. And where it say African American, we boy, we check that so quick because we know that ain't gonna affect us getting a job, boy. And yeah, let's see. Oh, you can move to a nice suburb neighborhood and go for a jog, and nobody's gonna be like, uh, excuse me, do you live around here? Where's what's your address? Uh, can I see some ID? And, damn it, this is the white privilege list. Where the black one at? Can't find it. Now is black privilege. I really don't like doing debunking videos, especially when it's people like this, but it's really gonna bug me if I don't get it out of the way first. For example, last month in Georgia, a black man shot and killed four elderly white people. He's referring to a black veteran who's diagnosed with PTSD and schizophrenia and had no indication of wanting to kill white people. Even so, he was hunted down and shot by the cops the next day. And despite all of this, no one really seems to care. The story barely got any national news coverage. But when the races were reversed and a similar incident happened in Florida, there was a national outcry. The similar incident was a planned act of white supremacy. I don't think I need to get deeper than that. Or what about when six black men attacked and robbed over 100 Asian women in San Francisco? Can you even imagine what would happen if six white men did that? 74.5% of anti-Asian crimes are committed by white people. And I don't think this is new information for my followers, but anti-black hate crimes are still almost three times as prevalent as the next one down. Now I want you guys to understand why these videos work so well. They obviously appeal to outright racist people, but it's deeper than that. Using the oppressed as the scapegoat for the oppressor's problems doesn't just give them a narrative that reinforces their already existing power, but it gives them a worldview that's simply easier to hold. For members of the oppressor group to aid in the deconstruction of whatever oppressive hierarchy, they need to acknowledge both the privilege that they have and their ability to do harm, which often requires recognizing the harm that they have done. I'm sure you understand how much easier it is to just ignore responsibility and direct all blame and attention to your designated scapegoat. In fact, the scapegoating of the oppressed by the oppressor functions like a parent having a designated scapegoat child. The scapegoating parent, who is typically the power holder in the family system and therefore in control of the family narrative, often has a story about their child that they are quick to share with anyone who will listen. A story whereby they are good and their scapegoated child is difficult, a problem, bad, and somehow innately defective. This distorted narrative designed to elevate the parent and demean the child is shared within and outside of the family, resulting in siblings, extended relatives, and friends of the family viewing the scapegoated child through the same distorted negative lens. One of the biggest problems in America right now is black privilege. When you're black, you're never really alone because there's always some racist boy obsessing over you. So what he does is he cherry picks a bunch of headlines that make his story look good. And he cherry picks one city with a large black population and a large Asian population, all of lower economic bracket, all living together with the Asian population having a greater chance of economic mobility than the black population. And poverty, as it has always done, leads to crime. Because poverty creates the desperate circumstances which makes crime seen as a valid alternative. If you really wanted to end crime, you would increase social safety nets so no one ever felt desperate enough to commit crime. But anyway, I just find these right-wingers so insane. Right now, Donald Trump and Republicans are trying to reach out to black people. But on the other hand, they still have people like this dude demonizing black people. Even when it's politically advantageous for them not to be racist, they just can't help themselves. I guess it's in their blood or something. <laughs> Let's be totally honest. One of the biggest problems in America right now is black privilege. Interesting. Okay. Carry on. For example, last month in Georgia, a black man shot and killed four elderly white people. Despite all of this, no one really seems to care. The story barely got any national news coverage. But when the races were reversed and a similar incident happened in Florida, there was a national outcry. This is true. I've been saying this for a while. We absolutely maximize when white people do something racist. And we absolutely minimize when black people do. Black people are allowed to be racist. They're allowed to say racist things, right? They're allowed to completely act racist. This is an example of black privilege. Black people in America today do indeed have black privilege. Does that mean that black people are privileged in every aspect of American life? No, but we do have black privilege. We should be held to the same standard that everybody else is held to. We get special treatment. And I find it interesting that a lot of us don't see that as insulting, but whatever, to each their own. One of the biggest problems in America right now is black privilege. So everybody and their mama and their mama's mama has already ripped this guy into a new one. So I'm just going to save my breath and go at this in a different angle. I think a lot of us have truly underestimated the power that right wing grifters have when it comes to setting up their phone, hitting record and just spewing out blatant misinformation, half truths and racist rhetoric. Over 200,000 people liked that video. 
People like Candace Owens, who makes this similar type of content, has over 4.6 million followers. And all that they do is use warped statistics and biased articles to push the narrative that black people, specifically black Americans, are more violent and everything that we experience on a systemic level is well deserved, like police brutality. These clowns play such a significant part in the phenomenon that has been happening with young teenage boys, specifically white teenage boys, which is the alt-right pipeline, and we've seen it. These young males are going out and committing hate crimes simply because they honestly think that we're a threat. Really wild to think about. Black privilege. For ex What? I gotta look this up. This is new. We got privileges? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Black privilege. Nothing. Black privilege. Nothing. Let's try this. White privilege. According to Wikipedia, white privilege or white skin privilege is the societal privilege that benefits white people over non-white people in some societies, particularly if they are otherwise under the same social, political, or economic circumstances. Let's admit it, brother, you reaching. You try to make up something that ain't don't exist. And uh, I happen to be black and I found no privileges. I looked on your Google, not my Google, your Google, and y'all don't have it there. So you're making this up straight from the rip. You're probably gaslighting or trying to make be famous amongst your peers talking what y'all talk at the cooler or by the poolside but there's no nothing that substantiate your claim what you might be talking about is criminal behavior and United States have a justice system that works very well when blacks are the perpetrator when non-whites are the perpetrators of criminal behavior, the justice system works to the maximum, to the max. So this black privilege you talking about is a privilege we don't want. We don't want this black privilege you claim. You mean we have the ability or the resources just to kill and don't go to jail? Because we go to jail. When we do criminal behavior, criminal activity, our people go to jail. And we are thrown the max sentence possible in these court systems. You probably never been in court, so you don't know. I've been in court just to sit and observe. And I watch the difference. Same crime, different people, different skin color, different times. There's no privilege for the black man in the United States. This is propaganda. Biggest problems in America right now is black privilege. Are we delusional? Black privilege? Here we go. Last month in Georgia, a black man shot and killed elderly white people. The story barely got any national news coverage. But when the races were reversed and a similar incident happened in Florida, there was a national outcry. Oh my God. Well, perchance, is there context surrounding both events that explains why the former wasn't described as an act of black supremacy? The first one doesn't seem like a targeted attack because the dude literally lived there. Like he was neighbors with all of the victims. You might say, well, you don't know if the one in Jacksonville was racially motivated. This shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people, according to Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters. You might say, well, how on earth could you know that? Well, apparently right before the shooting, he texted his father to check his computer, where his father found manifestos. He very specifically went to a Dollar General right next to a historically black school. Also, by the way, I don't know if you know this, there are a lot of mass shootings in the United States. Most of them do not make national news. What about when six black men attacked and robbed over 100 Asian women in San Francisco? Can you even imagine what would happen if six white men did that? Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I wonder what would happen. I bet they'd get arrested and charged with hate crimes. I bet the governor of the state would immediately hold a press conference in that city about hate crimes against that community. I bet at least one of them would be facing up to 95 years in prison. Side note, if you're about to argue that this would result in some sort of national outcry if these were six white men, I would like you to please name me one robbery. Any robbery. Unless you kill someone.
someone or steal the Mona Lisa, robberies do not make national headlines or result in public outcry. So I'd like to know what exactly would be happening to those six white men that are not happening to these six black men. Amazingly, in San Francisco, 85% of the physical assault crimes involve an Asian victim and a black perpetrator. Daniel, I've responded to you a few times on this app, and you have a habit of using sources that directly contradict you, but this is the very first time that you are contradicted, not by the source, but by the blurb that you put over your face. This does not say 85% of all physical assault crimes. This says that in a 2008 survey by the police department in which they analyzed 300 strong arm robberies, 85% of the physical assault crimes in these strong arm robberies, the victims were Asians and the perpetrators were African American. I really doubt this statistic is legitimate because it seems to directly contradict the Bureau of Justice statistics, which says that out of the 829,000 violent crimes against Asian Americans, 191,000 of them were by black perpetrators, which is a lot less than 75%. Secondly, San Francisco the Police Department does not keep race data on its victims or on its perpetrators. It's nowhere in any of their crime dashboards. You know what, let's give the benefit of the doubt and assume that this statistic is completely accurate, even though it definitely isn't, and try to ask ourselves, why would it be that such a high percentage of the perpetrators against Asian victims would be African American? First, let's look at the nature of the crime itself, a strong arm robbery, where you're using your physical strength to steal an object off of somebody's person. This requires that, one, you are able to overpower and outrun your victim, because you do not have a weapon, and two, that you do not have anything specifically in mind. You're not robbing a store, you're just taking whatever it is they have in their pockets. The letter shows that this is very clearly not a crime of passion. This is a crime of poverty, which means individuals that are more likely to experience poverty will be more likely to commit these very specific crimes. The nature of the crime itself also means that you're going to be more likely to target someone that you are more confident you are able to overpower or outrun, like the weak or the elderly. So a race with a large senior population will be more likely to be targeted. And crimes of poverty are also crimes of proximity, so because it's difficult to travel long distances. So you're most likely going to be committing these crimes to people that are near you. And in quite Quite a lot of urban centers, Asian communities and black communities are right next to each other, if not in the same place. If you live in New York City, you know that Chinatown is also a lot of old people. If you pass any park in Chinatown at, say, 8 in the morning, you will see a hundred different old Chinese women doing aerobics. I always want to join in. They're like 80 years old and they have so many friends. All these things together make it seem a lot more likely that we'd end up with a statistic like this. Obviously, the thing this guy is trying to imply here is that black people hate Asian people. So let's even give give him the fact that there might be animosity between these two groups. Now let's try to ask ourselves, why might it be that this animosity exists? I would wager that a large contributing factor to this would be the fact that quite a lot of white people will use Asian people as a way to dismiss black people's struggles. White people love pointing at Asian people and going, look, see, they made it, they're successful, therefore all the things that you're going through are actually just your fault. If there's white privilege, then there has to be Asian privilege, what? because Asians make more money than whites. And if you keep doing this, obviously it's going to build animosity between these two groups, which means that the solution to this animosity would be, one, not scapegoating Asians as a way to deflect from real world issues, and Two, trying to improve the material conditions of black people so there isn't this disparity to begin with. But you didn't do either of those two things. You just made a two minute TikTok in which you just showed a bunch of different news articles and basically said, wow, these black people need to be stopped. Take for example, James Lee Ramsey. Last year, he was convicted for assaulting an elderly Asian man. And despite the crime, he served less than a year in jail. I'm sorry, you're making a video about black privilege and you bring up the length of a prison sentence? You have to know that black people on average receive longer sentences than white perpetrators. On average, 19% longer, according to the United States Sentencing Commission, who go on to say that violence in an offender's criminal history does not appear to account for any of the demographic differences in sentencing. You found like one guy and were like, wow, this sentence doesn't seem that long and thought that like undid the mountains of evidence that show this disparity? This also seemed even that crazy. He was an assault charge, he pled guilty, he was sentenced to three years, and then yeah, was really on probation about a year later. It's that, that's really not that uncommon. But it's not just the elderly. An Asian high schooler was recently hospitalized after a black classmate stabbed him for fun. All right, so this is the point of the video where he clearly just Googled black crime and found every news article he could from the past two years in which a black person did something. This is not an argument. The only way things will get better is if we start being honest about what's really going on. Look, Daniel, the I once responded to a guy on the app that said black people were biologically criminals. You're not there. 
but you're getting really close what surprises me is how he said when black people do all these things they don't get called out because people are scared of being tagged way to the system last time i checked black people have been getting repercussions of their actions now i'm not here to defend any black person who is committing crime that's not what i'm saying i'm not here to say black people are perfect we don't have black people that do bad that's not what i'm saying i'm just saying last time i checked black people even get harsher punishments and harsher sentences than other groups of people in america specifically palm color people so why are you making it sound like black people have been getting away with crime I don't get it why is he making it sound like black people can get away with anything and like the system just favors them so at this point it's obvious that this guy is reaching like he's reaching so hard just to make black people seem like they commit lots of crimes and get away with it and then every other group of people are victims of black people sir your prejudice is showing you guys please just let me know what you think about this whole video in the comment section i'll be reading your comments please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys in my next video bye